The gentleman who's going to speak to you today doesn't need a great deal of introduction because you're all his big fans. But I want, for people who don't know, I'd like you to know a little bit about him. You can learn about him on his website and his Facebook page and also, I think, from reading his books. Uh, he, he's a Newburgh guy. He designates Newburgh as his hometown. Like a lot of you, he grew up here. So uh, I'm sure you're going to hear a little bit more about that, and you can ask him about it when you get your chance. He, when he left Newburgh, he went to college. He has a, a college degree in English, and he had a whole career before he started writing books. He worked in advertising as an executive and I think that when you get involved in his stories and, and they appeal to you so strongly, you can just feel what a good um, reach he has for what people want to hear. He's a wonderful writer, and I don't need to explain that to you either. So um, he very generously has agreed to uh, come here to talk to you about reading and to sign your books later. So I would like you all please to give him a very warm welcome. here actually, uh, originally North Plank Road, um, North Street for a long time, Central Avenue there, uh, Gibney Avenue, uh, Duchess Terrace over in Beacon. My father, this is kind of interesting and weird, my father grew up in the poorhouse here. His mother was a charwoman, which meant that she cleaned up the bathrooms and whatever, and then, then they got a room. and. Um, so that was his, his background, and then he, he, um, he was a bright guy and, and wound up going to Hamilton College. So, you know, you can, you can rise from a lot of different, a lot of different ways to, to move up in the world and move sideways and whatever, and that's what he did. Um, and, and you know, when you come home, and I, I come up here every once in a while, and you kind of, or I do, get caught up in a lot of of memories and epiphanies and remember things that I've forgotten for a long time, like Texas Wieners used to be on Broadway. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's still there, but you know, that was a place you could get Harper when you were like 10 years old. <laughs> kind of cool. And then Joe's Hot Dogs, which I know is still there. Um, and that's my, my, that was my, that was really, my father would always say, we're gonna do a really good thing for you, we can take you to Joe's. He's the one that wanted to go to Joe's Hot Dogs. <laughs> We did too. Spud Nuts was another place. I don't think that's here anymore. And I remember I was thinking on the way up about Dr. Fabrizi. He was our dentist. Horrifying. <laughs> Horrifying. I can still remember. It was a three-store walk-up, and um, you could you could smell that burning or that that smoky thing from the drill. Like yeah, on the first floor, you could smell it. I, we could smell it in the car on the way there. You know? <laughs> And, and, and when we went up there, he would make us take our belt off and, and bite down on it while he filled our teeth, you know, <laughs> terrible. And uh, in those days, Pony League was way out. I used to, you have to bicycle, you know, about four or five miles out to Pony League. And then I would strike out three times and then have to bicycle four or five you know, miles back. Actually, I was the home run champion in Pony League. One home run. <laughs> but I got a trophy, right? That's so cool. Do I know anybody here? Anybody yeah. that I actually know? Yeah. Hi! Hi! How do I know you? I sat in front of you in school. You sat in front of me in school? Yeah. Where? St. Patrick's. At St. Pat's? Okay. What's your name? Diane. Oh, okay. Diane. What was your name? Morgan. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hey. Who are you? You look different. Oh, Fred, hey, how are you? I can't see with these reading glasses on. Hi. Hi, I'm your cousin. No, no kidding. 
Oh my God, there's my mom. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, what else? St. Patrick's, um, uh, that's where I went to grade school and high school and church and all that. And, and back in those, and the mayor's here too, right? Where is, where's the mayor? Right there, okay. I hear you doing a wonderful job lighting the place up again, which is terrific. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, everybody I talk to, they, they say really wonderful things about you, which is, uh, which is good. Well, not everybody, but mostly everybody. <laughs> Back in those days of St. Patrick's Day, everything was a sin. <laughs> if you chewed with your mouth open, that was a venial sin. If you ate meat on Friday, that was a mortal sin, you go straight to hell. So that was bad. But you like to go over to Pete's hot dogs, and you go, is there meat in these hot dogs? And you go, no, no, no. So you could eat the hot dogs at Pete's, it was okay, you know? My, um, my Uncle George had a liquor store on Broadway. I think these days if you have a liquor store on Broadway, you better be an ex-Navy SEAL or something. <laughs> um, let's see, my grandmother, she had a house on Bankard Avenue. I think she'd be a little surprised at the change in, in Bankard Avenue these days. But um, yeah, it'll come back, it'll all come back. My mother used to take me to this, well the library was over there. Uh, not far away. So I guess we can honestly say that this is where I started off as a writer, uh, right here. And, and, and something that I think is very cool, and I, I'm not bragging here, because this is about Newburgh, I think. Uh, and I think this is a really cool thing, and it's, it's um, the fact that the best-selling writer in the world came from Newburgh. I think that says good things about the town. I think it says good things about the future. I think it says good things about hopefulness and potential for people. And you can do stuff, you know? Another interesting thing in that regard, we just finished um, a new Alex Cross movie, which is coming out in October, uh, with the very clever title, Alex Cross. <laughs> And um, it stars Tyler Perry instead of Morgan, uh, which is, I'll tell you what, and Tyler does, you know, Tyler's known as Medea normally, but he does a great job. He's a very, um, he has a very strong will, and I went and met him in Atlanta before they started shooting, and he said, Jim, I wouldn't do this if I wasn't sure I could pull it off, and he did a great job. But the other interesting thing about this movie is the director is a guy by the name of Rob Cohen. And Rob Cohen is also from Newburgh, which is very cool. He went to Newburgh Free Academy. Um, so that's, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of neat to, to think about. And I always like the idea that, you know, Mickey Scott came from Newburgh. He was pitched for the Yankees and Bobby Short pitched for the Yankees. I think that stuff is just kind of cool every once in a while to think about. Tell you a couple of, of book stories. Um, the most recent one, when I was on my way through the people here today, some, a woman said to me, she said, you look much taller on your book jackets. <laughs> Actually, I used to be taller. I used to be like almost six foot, and now I, you know, I'm not quite there. In fact, the irritating thing, my son Jack, it just passed me by in height, it's sad, he's 14 and he's like six foot. Frightening. Um, my first uh, novel was called The Thomas Behrman Number, and I was, I mean, this is also kind of interesting. I published it when I was 26, um, which was amazing, but it got 31 rejections. So if you're, somebody was talking to me bo before about a short story that he just finished, and you just have to accept that there, that there could be rejections. But then after the, the book had all those rejections, it won an Edgar as the best uh, first mystery in, in America after it was turned down by, by so many companies. Actually, Little Brown, who, who is my publisher, and the Little Brown people are all here right now. They get in the front because they're like really important. <laughs> this is my editor and the publisher, Michael Peach, uh, who's, who's a terrific, terrific editor, and he uh, edits everybody you like, everybody you like. Uh, and my son, Jack, and my wife, Sue, and the, uh, the incomparable Rust family, who take care of me uh, in New York. 
Um, at any rate, more sort of book stories. Um, years ago, I, I wrote a book called Along Came a Spider, and I never really had a hit. And um, I looked at the New York Times bestseller list, and it was number six, and I'm going, this must be a misprint, because my, my books you know, don't become hits. And then I went to the, a local bookstore, big store, and what we'll, what we'll do, uh, what authors do, is we go and we count the books. We go, there used to be 12, and now there's nine, so you know, it looks like it's selling, you know. And while I was there, this woman picked up the book, and, and if we see you pick up one of our books in a bookstore or at the airport or something, if you buy it, it makes our day. If you put it down, it breaks our hearts. So I'm watching this woman with the Long Came a Spider, and she puts it under her arm and she walks down the aisle, and I'm like, this is the best. The, the book pile is down. I just saw somebody actually, you know. At any rate, I'm watching this woman. She gets about halfway down the aisle. She slides it into her pocketbook. She, she stole the book. I couldn't believe it. You know? The um, right around that time, I went to this um, one of the local stores there, and, and I was going to sign some books for them. Just stopping by, and they, uh, yeah, I lost it. Where, where did that water go? Did I knock it over? Oh, these hands used to be so. Be able to handle ground balls and stuff. You know, they can't handle a water bottle. Um, where was I? Oh, so this, this sort of drive-by signing at a bookstore, and they're all excited. Oh, Mr. Patterson, this is so great. We love your books. Yada, yada, yada. They're slapping low fives and slapping high fives. And so happy to see me. And they say, we must have 500 of your books in the back. I get in the back, and there are all these books. Richard North Patterson books. <laughs> So I signed him. <laughs> it always works, Mikey. It always works. Uh, somewhere along the way, Hollywood called, and I made the mistake of, of answering. As you said, as I said, we, we have this new Alice Cross, but um, the first one we did was Kiss the Girls, and um, I went on that shoot, and everybody was very nice to me. But you know, Morgan Freeman was Alice Cross in that one. But I soon found out that on the movie shoot, the novelist rates somewhere below the caterer. They know why the caterer's there. They don't know why the novelist showed up. The, um, nowadays, I, I write a lot of books for kids. Um, we have the middle, middle school series, which I think a lot of you are familiar with, which I really like. I, I, I think that those are actually the best books that I do. Uh, and then we have Maximum Ride, uh, the Kids That Fly, and that series is about to end. In August, we have the last Maximum Ride. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was actually nominated for Children's Choice Author of the Year. And um, my son Jack, he said, um, he said, don't get me wrong, Dad, I, you know, I really like your books, but Rick Reardon's going to win. And Rick Reardon does the Percy Jackson books. So I said, all right. So we went up to New York. It was really a nice ceremony because the children's authors, they're not as obnoxious as the adult authors. And they give good speeches because they have to perform in front of schools and stuff, so they're used to like keeping people interested. And, uh, and I won. I won Children's Choice Author of the Year. So I got up on the stage, and I, of course, said Jack said I wasn't going to win. But uh, you know, then I held up the trophy, and I said, this is for you, Jack. And I knew he would always have that memory of coming up to New York with this monkey. Do you still have that memory? <laughs> he said, no, I don't, I don't remember. What, what happened? No, but I thought he would always have that memory of coming up and, 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 and my saying that the book was for him. It really is. I mean, the draw. It was, it's for me, but, you know. Um, the connection, I think, between the books and my spending time here and whatever and the library is important and there this is just for the parents and, and I include myself in, in that group because Jack and I still have daily discussions about reading we had one just this morning didn't we Gwendolyn Brooks yes you can't wait uh, and the thing about it parents if you just think about this it's our job to get our kids reading it is our job you know, we all know we're supposed to get, you know, kids and teach them how to throw a baseball, and that's a good thing. And teach them how to ride a bike, and that's a good thing. And teach them how to eat their veggies, and that's a good thing. But probably the most important thing is to get them reading. And it's not the school's job. It's not the library's job. They can help, and they do help. But, it, but it's our job. And, you know, as individuals, 
we can't solve the, the uh, health care crisis and we can't solve the financial crisis, but we actually as individuals can get our kids reading, most of the time anyway. Um, when Jack was eight, If you're here, you probably pretty much believe that. But try to spread that in a nice way to other people, to get them, because sometimes the light just doesn't go off and they don't go, oh yeah, that's right, I, I should have. One of my best friends, his wife died when, when his boys were young, and he brought and the kid, he brought up the kids great. They're really terrific, and uh, uh, they're, they're, they're young men now. But it never occurred to him that it was his job to actually go find books for the kids. And, 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 and anyway, when Jack was a, uh, he wasn't a big reader, and um, so that su but that summer, Sue and I, my wife and I said, Jack, you're going you're gonna to read every day, and his response was, do I have to? And we said, yeah, if you want to, you know, live in our house. <laughs> um, but, 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 we're going to go out, we're going to find cool books for you. So we went out, and we got about a dozen books, and by the end of the summer, Jack really loved about six or seven or eight of those that he read. Really liked them a lot. We got Percy Jackson, which is how we thought Percy was going to beat me, but you know. And we got the, the Warriors, which is a book about cats, which is another cool series. And we got Wrinkle in Time and, you know, whatever. And um, um, by the end of the summer, as I say, he, he read a lot of books that he really liked, um, and his reading skills had gone through the roof. Uh, he really was such a, so much better reader. And it just opens up doors for him. He suddenly became a much better student. And re recently, not to brag on him, but he got an 800 on his SSATs. And it's just like, and this is this goes from from not being, not really being that interested in reading. So you can, I mean, whatever, it, it, you're just going to get better at it. And and school is going to be easier. Uh, and and uh, you know, a, a, and a lot of doors are going to open up. So I I, I hope. I don't know if we have any newspapers or whatever here, the local newspapers. Um, but I hope that the newspapers on a, on a regular basis will keep pushing this notion that the children of Newburgh need to read. The children of Newburgh need to read. They do. And learning how to read will get a lot more kids through high school in a good way if they can read reasonably well. And, and you really, you gotta tackle it in middle school. That's when you can become a pretty good reader and you can get some basic math. And if you have that, you can be okay. If you can read, you can get through science and you can get through history if you can read pretty well. You don't have to be a great reader, but you gotta be a pretty good reader. And the key to reading is you gotta, you gotta read stuff. And it's like, I went to schools and I go, who likes soccer? Yeah. All right, are you better now or four years ago? Are you better now? Why? We play a lot. Same with reading. The more you read, the better you get at it. And the cool thing about reading is there really are some cool books to read. They're just as good as movies, some of the better ones. And you can get better and better at it by basically reading books that are fun to read. And, and, and the other thing about, you know, in terms of the kids in Newburgh, the, the more they read, the more kids will get into college. The more they read, the better people they'll be. Uh, the more they read, the more choices they're going to have in life. If you don't read well, your choice is really limited. It's going to be a small number of things. If you, if you can read well, you're going to have more choices. And, and that's really important. Reading will help to rejuvenate and turn the lights on in this town, which I love dearly. Uh, that's why I'm here with you today. That's why I'm back home in Newburgh, because I care about the town. Uh, we've worked a bit, and we're going to continue to work. And that's why this summer, uh, or this, this fall, I'm sorry, um, I will, we will donate books to every school in the town. And one, of the things, one of the things that's always defined this city for me is the river. So I encourage you all not to, it's very simple, very easy when you're around something all the time to start taking it for granted and not even seeing it. Look at that river. Ever since Jack was little, I, I, I would take him out and i say, the river is life. The river is life. It flows, it's constant, it's consistent, it's predictable, it's powerful, 
And if you get out of sync, if this town is out of sync with the river and it is a little bit right now, then it means it's out of sync with life. It's out of sync with the universe. It's out of sync with God. It's out of sync. Get in sync with the river. Look at the river, man. There it is. There's your lesson. There's everybody's lesson. One last story and then we'll, we'll, we'll any questions anybody has. Um, when I was a kid here, my, um, my grandfather delivered um, ice cream and frozen food and, and that stuff. And, and the big thing for, for me, once a week during the summer, he would take me with him. And he'd get up around 3.30 in the morning, we'd pack up the truck. Now, we don't know that's not the most glamorous thing in the world, to be getting up at 3.30 and packing stuff into a, a, a truck. But it was a great thing for, for me, and, and, and um, I, I loved it. And he would take the route over the, storm, oh, the old Storm King Highway, and he'd always be singing at the top of his lungs. Oh, Suzanne, and put another nickel in, in the Nickelodeon, and the songs from back then. And he said to me, he said, Jim, I don't care what you do when you grow up. I don't care if you become a surgeon or the next president or if you drive a truck like I do. But just remember, when you go over the mountain to work in the morning, you've got to be singing. And I do. And I hope all of you do. Okay. So we're going to do some questions and answers and... I just make crap up, so that's the nice thing about it. Anybody else I know here? My cousin. My cousin. Anybody else? Nobody. Not a soul. Okay. Hi. Part of the Fogarty's. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, you're. Uh, to high school together. Is your your brother up at uh, Trump? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going there on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Where are we? Yes, I of course I want the podium. Are you kidding? This is power. Hi. Yeah, there's a question from the from your card there. What do I like pizza or hamburger? What my first question is what inspired you to be an author? What inspired me to be an author? Um strange situation actually when I when I left Newburgh, my family moved to Lexington, Mass, and I didn't have a job, I didn't have any money for college, and I got a job at a mental hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually was very cool. James Taylor was there, the singer, and, uh, and, he, and he, he was singing the songs there. It was, it was very, in fact, Fire and Rain is a, sort of about the hospital bit, and his brother and his sister, Ray Charles, uh, used to have to check in there. Uh, he had been uh, convicted of, I guess, heroin possession, and any time he played in Boston, he had to check into McLean for like three days. And he would just, you know. And I worked a lot of night shifts, and there was nothing much to do unless somebody went crazy. Um, and um, so I started reading a lot. And then I started scribbling, and I loved it. And somebody said, you're lucky if you find something in life that you love to do, and then it's a miracle if somebody will pay you to do it. So that's kind of what happened with me. I, uh, I started writing, I really loved to do it, and then to pay the bills I started writing advertising and I would write little jingles like, uh, I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid, uh, and aren't you hungry for Burger King now, and all those classics. But I was writing and then I started writing novels on the side, so that was very cool. Questions? You're just scratching your head. Yes. Stand up. Speak into the mic. How did you come up with the idea to write middle school, the worst years of my life? How did I come up with the idea to write middle school, the worst years of my life? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, you know what it was a little bit? Uh, there's a book uh, called, 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 Ned, help me out. Henry, invention of, uh, Henry? No, you go, Kevin, right. Is it a terrific book called The Invention of Hugo Cabaret, and, and it has a lot of illustra wonderful illustrations, and it's a very good story. And then they moved, made a movie called Hugo. And um, I, I looked at that and I said, you know, this idea of combining illustrations and, and, and um, prose really appeals to me. So, so that was part of it, uh, and that was a big part of it. And the idea of then writing a book that was very funny, but it also had some real truth about what it's like to grow up and go to school and 
you know, but while making it humorous at the same time. So that was just a very attractive thing to me. And, and it was a new challenge. I didn't know whether I could do it. I didn't know I could be hilarious as I am in that book. Um, and, and, and speaking of hilarious, there's, there's another one. Well, there's one. There's another one out now. Uh, middle school, uh, get me out of here. And then, you know, there's a girl in, in his sister, Georgia. Ray Cachadorian is the main guy in the first two books. And he makes fun of his sister a lot, Georgia. The third book is called uh, Middle School, My Brother is a Big Fat Liar. And Georgia tells the whole story in that one. So, but this, uh, in December, there's a book similar. It's not Rafe, but it's, it's called I Funny. And it's illustrated too, but it's about a kid who wants to be a stand-up comedian. And he learns every joke in the history of mankind. And it's, it's very funny. Because uh, I could steal everybody's jokes. Yes. Yes. You don't have a question. Okay. Oh, okay. I forgot to mention Vine Street. Yeah, that was another street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is for you. It's like basketball. It's from the Bacon Historical. And there's a picture of you. I'd like you to have it. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks. I did. Yeah, most of the day. Mario Brothers. Which one of your books do you consider the best one you've written? Which book do I consider the best that I've written? I, you know, I, mm, I, this is one of those, like, all of my babies. There's some I don't like as well, but, you know, I, I, I love that I created Alice Cross. I love the middle school books. Uh, a book called Honeymoon I like a lot. Uh, I mean, part of it is, and, and I've created a lot of characters that I'm happy that I created, The Woman's Murder Club. Uh, maximum ride. Uh, I, I think that's the, the thing that I'm, I'm probably happiest about in terms of, of what I've accomplished uh, so far. But you know, there's still another 30, 40 years of books. That would be about three, four hundred books. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to really run her. I mean, give me a question in that back corner. The... Now. Yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. How do you keep all the characters? How do I keep the characters in straight in my head? It's hard for the reader almost. I know, yeah. I wrote a book called The Gesture. It was a historical book, and, and I was writing Alex Cross in there. I went, oh, this is... Yeah. I, for some reason, I, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have a problem with that. The only problem I do have is, is sort of remembering all the stories. You know, like, what have I... What stories have I told? What haven't I told? And I... So, you know, help me out there. <laughs> for, I'm going to run to the back. But oh, oh, as I do that, yeah, we're going to be next. No, you're you're going to be it. But first, we got one right here. A question that was submitted by a However it is. child here. Where did you come up with the idea of an alien hunter and his people's connections with elephants? I didn't if do that. That question ever. <laughs> if that question, no one knows what it means. It's the best book talk question I've heard in a long time. The, the, this is a series of book called Daniel X, and and. Daniel X, to me, has the greatest of all superpowers. This is like the ultimate superpower. He can actually create. Uh, and that's what interested me about the series. That notion of, of you know, and I, in Hollywood, they're too dumb at that. They don't even get that. Oh, that would be so cool. He could create stuff, you know. More than, like, spiders. He can do spider webs on the wall. Wow. Holy mackerel. How interesting is that? Uh, this kid can create. I don't know, whatever. Back there, You're, are you helping somebody? No, not you, right back there. Man in the blue, I'm gonna come to you next. Lady in the gray. Man in the blue, and I don't know if you're helping somebody over there or if this is gonna be you. We'll see, it's you. Is the mic on? Um, yeah, I've yes. read most of you, I've read most of you books. Sing? No. <laughs> I read most of your books, you know, throughout high school and stuff. Uh, you know, I read the whole Maximum Rise series and everything, and the Women's Murder Club. And um, I'm just wondering if there's ever going to be like a, a, like a motion picture for any of the Women's Murder Club books. Well, there was a TV series, which yeah, I, I which I didn't book. like. <laughs> um, 
I, uh, there might be a Michael Bennett TV series now. Apparently, okay. Okay. I think I, I will see. <laughs> we got the out. We have Alice Cross in October. Okay. Maybe uh, middle school. I just finished the screenplay. Well, actually, the woman uh, that movie Brave, the Pixar movie. Yeah. She's actually the woman that wrote that is writing the doing a polish on middle school. Okay. Michael Bennett supposedly one of the networks is is going to buy that. We have a script and everything, but I never know about Hollywood. So I'm I'm hopeful. Now there was a lady in a gray. Yeah, yeah, there she is. Okay. We're getting the mic to you. I had nightmares about Gary Sanji. For You're welcome. Here. <laughs> I think He's dead, but I'm not dead. Oh, wait a minute. There he is. Where do you get inspiration for the different serial killers, the ideas? My wife. <laughs> I write all the cute stuff, the comedy, and Sue. I don't know. She's a twisted lady. Yeah. Where are we? I don't know. Yeah, yellow shirt. Talk a little bit about the, the uh, collaborative process. Talk about the collaborative. What do you, you want to collaborate? No, yeah, no, finish no. the part I, B, yeah. And then, well, what are you, a history I, professor? Uh, I teach sociology right around no, the there you go. <laughs> part B. Yeah, go ahead. And and are you going to do another historical novel like Chester? Um, okay, the, the collaborate. you want to see the collaboration yeah, thing? Yeah. You ready? He... No, we alternate words. That's the you know, that's a collaboration thing. Who kickstarts the process? All right. How does that? How does the collaboration thing work? I will write a sixty to eighty page outline, which Michael knows. Uh, I then it's it, it's always a writer who understands that the game is we're writing a James Patterson novel. So th there's the outline. They will write the first draft. Unlike mostly the publishing process. I, I want to see work every two weeks so that if somebody's off, I can go, hold it, we're veering and that's not the Women's Murder Club, etc. Um, after When the first draft is in, I'll then write subsequent drafts and that can be one draft and it could be in the case of one of the romances, it was nine more drafts. So so that's sort of the process for the, for the co-writing thing. Uh, the historical, I don't know. I um, Jester didn't sell as well as I would. I like Jester. It, it Sue thought it was a, my best book. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll do another. I did one nonfiction that I like called uh, uh, Against Medical Advice. That was, a, I think, a very good book. You just yeah. yes. When you were you were younger, sneaky on the side there. You know. <laughs> when I was younger. When you were younger, what when was I your was, favorite book to read? When I was younger, what was my favorite book to read? I wasn't a huge reader as a kid. Um, strangely, my mother was a teacher. I used to go to the library and pick my nose. Um, I, um, you know, I don't remember. The, I remember the Hardy Boys and some of the stuff, but I don't remember being tremendously turned on when I was real young. And as I said, my turn on was really more uh, right after high school. And I think one of the issues is always, I, I, I think it's important that in middle schools and, and high schools that they mix in a certain amount of books where people, kids are going to go, I love that book. You know, because it's it just, you have to get ready for Shakespeare. You got, you got to be a real good, and I, I could get kids more cool and ready for Shakespeare than I think. It, it's not an issue of, here's Hamlet, uh, read the first 50 pages. You got to get set up for it. You got to get, you, know, you got to understand what he's doing, what he's done, and you know they're about. I could fill a blackboard with all these words and phrases, okay? All the blackboards in the whole room. And the weird thing about it is, I could say he invented every word on this. He invented these words. These weren't road. He invented the word road, and you know, I, and that's kind of cool. And then I'm, I'm a little more interested in Shakespeare when I think about what he's done to the language, you know. A little more interesting. Yeah, but anyway, I, I know you didn't ask that. Uh, way in the back. I told you I'm going to run you. Okay, take your time. Water, soda, water. Soda. I have uh, just two questions for you. Oh, only two. Only two. Um, who is your favorite author? And what would you say is your key to success? 
favorite author, I mean, really, there's all kinds of, I mean, I, I'm a, I've always been a big James Joyce fan. I don't know why. I think part of it is, is linked into where he came from and, and autobiographical things about him, etc. cetera. Um, um, 100 Years of Solitude, I've said many times, is, is, is a favorite. I, I like magic realism. I like the idea of, of, of writing things that are sort of fantasy, but, but describing them kind of realistically. Um, George Pelicanos is a, is a huge, uh, I, I love his mysteries. Um, he isn't as popular as some, but he, he should be. Uh, what was the second question? Oh, the key to my success? I, you know, a lot of it is lucky bounces. Um, part of it is is um, a focus. Um, part of it is um, what I said about reading. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Uh, it's wanting something and, and being reasonably good at it. And, and then you just keep doing it, doing it, doing it. I think I'm a very good storyteller. I'm not the greatest stylist in the world, but I'm, but I'm, a, but I'm a good storyteller. I think, I mean, even something like dancing. I mean, let's say you, you, you go in a, in, a, in a school and 500 kids want to be dancers. Well, you're probably not going to be professional dancers, maybe not any of them, but that doesn't mean you can't be a dancer. So you, you know, you practice it, you get better at it, you do it in your house, maybe you do it in a, you know, whatever. So there's a lot of things you can do. Writing now, I mean, there are a lot of outlets with the, with the, with the uh, uh, you know, online. So you can write stories, you can write a novel, and, and, you can, you can, and people will read it, which is, which is kind of cool. So, uh, no, I, yeah, you get somebody back there. Yeah, there's a guy behind you there. Uh, I wanted to know, when you start writing, do you start with a full idea, and go from there uh, with your outline. And why do you have co-authors? Um, I have co-authors because I have a at home this thick, okay, uh, of, of ideas, and I couldn't possibly do them all myself. And I found that, for starters, one thing that people need to understand is there's an awful lot of things that are co-written. Almost all television shows are co-written. You know, 60-page scripts, two or three people write them. Uh, movies, a lot of them, and, and a lot of books are too, so it's not like it's something weird. You go through the, the cathedrals in, in Europe and you're going to find a lot of people worked on the churches, so it's, it's, not, it's not like some bizarre thing. And, and what I found, and, and I'm a big fan of teamwork anyway, um, and, and in advertising, it's all teams. And I found that, you know, for example, uh, 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 Peter DeYoung is a, a guy I've written with a few times, Peter's a much better stylist than I am, and Peter can't tell a story to save his life. So I'm a really good storyteller, he's a good stylist, so as a team, it's a good team. The books tend to be quite well written and, uh, and, and, and good stories. Yeah, so, yeah, right there. You, Pink. Are you interested in writing or reading? Am I interested in writing or reading? I'm interested in both. Uh, I read a lot, still. I'm reading right now the, uh, there's a big, uh, this is big, book about Lyndon Johnson that I'm reading. Really big. But it's very interesting, and just in terms of, of who Johnson was, and you know, maybe one of our best presidents, did a lot of great things, how we interacted with John Kennedy, you know, so that's very cool. Um, and, and, and they're writing, obviously. So I like to do both. And, and I think that the only trick is uh, you don't want to read stuff and find yourself writing in that style. So they wouldn't like that if I started writing like uh, like uh, Robert Carroll in my mysteries. That'd be weird. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh no. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Pink to pink. Um, what's the most difficult part about writing a book? Uh, what's the most difficult thing about writing a book? You know, that every author is going to say something different. Um, I think you have to have a certain amount of courage because it's going to take a long time. There's going to be, you know, you, you can go for a couple of years. I just, some guy, this is really horrifying. Uh, he'd been working on his book for 20 years and he gave it to me. And I'm like, and, and I don't think, he, I don't, see how he could sell it. 
you know, 20 years, and it's like so. Um, but I mean, that's the trick. You, you have to have you have to have the courage to do it. And you know, my father, when he when he got out of uh, uh, business, he, he wrote a novel, didn't get published. But I thought he did a good job. And he was, you know, disappointed but comfortable with the fact that he that he wrote a pretty good book. That's the hard thing. Right there, mom and son helping her hold. <laughs> so cool. Is Mayor still here? Or did she leave? Already? Oh God bless. I've um, seen you political figures come and go. And I want to talk to her. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Yes. Are any of the characters in your books, your young adult books, are they inspired by your son or any of them done after your son? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, certainly, no, not inspired by Jack. I think, um, you know, part of what inspired me to get into writing for kids was Jack and his friends. And and uh, I had an agent who said, you know, your kind of storytelling, that the, the pace that you use would be good for kids' books because, you know, kids, they want stuff to happen quickly. So, you know, and that, that's okay. okay. Right there. Math? Yeah. Um, I always wanted to be a writer since I was a like, little girl. But, okay. you know, I'm There's from the West Indies. So. There's time. Yeah. But now I'm. In Howard Fast was still writing when he was like 93. <laughs> Who's the guy? Um, Herman Wolf. Wolf just helps you at 94. Plenty of time. You still get another 60 years. <laughs> I now finally get the courage to do it. How do I go about publishing poetry and um, write sh writing short stories? Publishing, publishing it is very hard. I mean, uh, you know, part of it is, uh, as I say, on, on the internet, there are books in the library like what? Literary Marketplace in the library. How to get published, Literary Marketplace. Those are a couple. You just have to kind of go through them and, and they'll give you who to send it to and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's gonna take you a few hours to, to sort of look through and find some places. And then, you know, they'll give, you know, if you send it out to a few places, you'll, you'll get some idea. But remember, what I said about my, the first book, turned down by 31 publishers, and then it wins Best Novel. So, you know, I don't know what that's all about. Right there. Do you have any That's tips why I like having this thing. For uh, young writers? Do I have any? Uh, yeah, you know, just write, write, write. Try to write every day. If you write a, a, a page a day, at the end of the year, you'll have 365 pages. <laughs> you, know? uh, you write two pages, you'll have 700 and something. Uh, yeah, I mean, you try to do it all the time. And, and, um, you know, I, I, I think part of it is, it depends on what, what kind of things you want to write. If you want to write popular stories, write the story down and then, and then polish it. But get the story down first and then, and then you can polish it for years if you want to. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why did you want to come to Newburgh? <laughs> Man, that's a good question. I've been asking myself that since I picked up. I grew up here. I grew up here. This is where I was born. I still come. I still have friends in the area, although none of them came. Um, um, so yeah, I, and, you know, and and, and, and I want to help in, 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 in so far as I can. I think that I do think reading uh, can be can really help the town. I think getting kids reading here is really important. Really important. Because it took a long time to create the problems in this city. It's 20, 30 years. This has been building for a long time. And it's not going to change overnight. It's going to take a while. And, and part of it is, is the more kids read, the smarter they're going to get, the more they're going to go, I don't want to live that kind of life. I'm going to live this kind of a life. Uh, they're not going to be as susceptible to, uh, to certain things. So that's why I came. Yeah, I, I think we have time for just about three more questions. Three more questions. 
I have, oh my god! I have a follow-up to that previous question. Have you ever used your background in Newburgh as, uh, as a setting for a novel? Oh my god, a loaded question. <laughs> Good question. Uh, I have a book out right now, I'm Michael Bennett, an adult book. Yes, you should all buy it. <laughs> About half of it takes place here. Oh, wow. right. And it deals with... Um, in a, you know, in, in a fictional way, making things happen in Newburgh. It's a good story. Michael Bennett uh, is, is a New York cop who has 10 kids, which is really weird. <laughs> but he does. And, um, and, and, and he's always vacationed up. He, and he comes up to Orange Lake, and uh, things happen. It, it's a good story. If you read any fiction, and if you don't, you should. Now, you, you'll like, you always wind up liking stuff that's about your town. So... It's a good book. Available? No, I don't even know if we have it here. I guess we do. Yes, you do. There it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. That doesn't count as a question. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that was were, an ad. When you were younger, did you like read a series of books? I'm sorry. What? When you were younger, did you read a series like of books? I, a little bit. Yeah. As they said, Hardy Boys, and I don't remember what else. But yeah, a, a little bit. I know a lot of kids do. I mean, they'll read. <clears throat> they will like say like my Maximum Rides or. Percy Jackson. <laughs> the Warriors. Have you ever read The Warriors? Warriors are kind of cool. It's all cats. Um, yeah. Back there. Okay, that lady sitting. Yeah, okay. How do you prepare for a book? How do I prepare for the. First, I go to church <laughs> and I pray. Uh, well, the outline. I mean, the first thing I'll do is I'll go to my sort of thing of ideas and I'll see if there's anything in there that I'm interested in writing. And then, if you have an idea that you like, then it's a question of, you know, can you, can you connect the story to the idea? And, and, and you have to like the story. So that's where the, I'll start making notes about an outline, something like that. There's a lady over there, far, she's getting a, a cancer <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna help. I help. I'm gonna run her, and then we're gonna bring somebody over there. And we'll pick you up. That's not a big deal. What inspired you to write Maximum Ride? Uh, what inspired me to write Maximum Ride? Maximum Ride is about a bunch of kids who are brought up in a in a laboratory, hidden out you know in the mountains, outlaw, uh, and and they were. When I, when I researched that book, I talked to about 50 scientists, because these kids have wings. They're created with wings, which is, which is very cool. But they can like be wearing a coat and stuff, and then you know, so you wouldn't know. They could be sitting here, and you wouldn't know that they had wings, which is very cool. Uh, the idea of flying, I think, is one of the fantasies that we all have. Uh, and I was uh, down south at one point, and I had to go to a book conference in, I don't know, Georgia or South Carolina. And you had to go through swamps, which they call marshlands. And um, they're very pretty, I mean, from a distance. And there were birds <laughs> flying over the marshlands. And um, uh, it just, I said, boy, I, I, would, I don't want to be a bird, but man, I would love to fly over the marshlands like that. So the idea about writing about flying was very uh, attractive to me. And that, that's another one. I mean, it's an expensive movie, but we have actually the guy who produced Spider-Man and, uh, and uh, Iron Man is, so I, there's a chance that could get made soon. I've been saying that for a while, but it, it's hopeful. Oh man, I can't, I can't choose. Where you choose? When you were young, did you always want to be When I was young, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> I'm still young. Did you always want to be a writer? No. When I was young, did I always want to be a writer? No, I wanted to be a basketball player. I could dunk. That was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, um, I, no, I didn't want to be a writer. I hadn't really thought about it. I mean, it really came a little later, you know, like when I was 20 or so when I started. And even then, I thought it was presumptuous to think I could be a writer. But I knew I loved to write. Right there. Were you influenced at all by Mickey Splane, another local writer? Was I influenced by Mickey Splane? You know, not not really. 
Um, I, I, my father used to love this stuff. I, I never, I used to go looking for the dirty parts, but I, uh, I not really, no. I, nothing against Mickey's playing. I, I just, uh, How do you come up with the titles of your books? Uh, well, I, I think titles are important because it's the first thing you're going to see. And I think, I mean, ideally titles in the cover should communicate in an exciting way why that author wanted to write the book and, and then why the publisher bought it. Otherwise, I mean, the, nobody's going to pick the book up. So I think it's important. So Along Came a Spider actually originally was called Remember Maggie Rose. Uh, and we all just figured, eh, you know, maybe along. And then also along came a spider. Once we came up with that, uh, it was like, okay, we can do nursery rhyme titles for a while. So anyway, one more question, and then uh, I don't know what we're doing. You're buying me lunch. Or something. This guy, yeah. We do this guy, and then one, one back there. Yeah. Hold that mic, and yes, Mr. Something for. Um, I was wondering. Uh, you said. About, they were thinking about making a maximum ride. Movie? Film. Yeah. Are they looking for actors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we found one. We're making a maximum ride, and are we looking for actors? Yeah, no, they haven't gotten to that stage yet, but they will. Uh, who do you want to be? Iggy. Iggy? Yeah. Let, me see. Let me see you do the Iggy. Actually, you both like Iggy. Yeah, you can do stuff. They, 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 look at Tom Cruise, you know? <laughs> I actually met Tom Cruise. I, I spent like two hours in his house. He was very nice. He's not little the other. Okay, one more question. How do you come up with the characters? How do I come up with the characters? I have a question and I'm totally stumped. Uh, you know, I don't, Alex Cross initially, when I wrote the first 50 pages, it was a woman. And I just, I wasn't liking the story for some reason, and I changed it to Alex. Uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, I'll have an idea, and then I just keep layering on other pieces. I can't resist you, little man jumping, jumping. In. What do you want? You want money? Popcorn? We're gonna get you a mic. I, I wanted I wanted to just run her one more time. I I know right. you wanna be an actor too, I got it. I know why you can remember the books that you told in the ones you didn't. You can take a whiteboard and draw a line in the middle, one side and you write the story that you did tell and and the one side and on the other day, you say that the one that you didn't tell. There you go. <laughs> you know, I don't like talking to physics professors. They're too, uh, yes, I agree. I'm not quite sure. That was good, I think. Thank you. creative. It, it's no surprise to me. He has millions of books and millions of books sold. And what a treat you've been put here. Uh, I'm going to explain to you who are eagerly waiting to have Mr. Patterson sign your book how it's going to work. <laughs>